the nation's favourite celebrities. Right, I like surprises. Paired up with an expert. I got excited then. <gasps> Whoopsie. <laughs> and a classic car. Here we go. Wow. Their mission to scar Britain for antiques. Am I on safari? The aim to make the biggest profit at auction. <gasps> but it's no easy ride. Oh dear. Who will find a hidden gem? Yeah. Mm. Who will take the biggest risk? Will anybody follow expert advice? I hate it. There will be worthy winners <laughs> and valiant losers. Double draft. Oh, no. Put your pebble to the metal. Spend, spend, spend. This is the Celebrity Antiques Road Trip. <laughs> what fun. Welcome to our poetry special. Who's sonnet? An heroic couplet. That's who. Get it? Do you think all poets used to travel like this? So they're engaged. Positive, yeah. Chauffeur-driven yeah. majesty. Maybe not a car as good as this, though. On a clear day, you can see the chauffeur. <laughs> <laughs> yes, our latest trippers are David, doing the driving, morning, David, and doing the buying, noted rhyme master John Cooper Clark and his chum, the stand-up comic and TV personality Phil Jupiter. <laughs> are you much of a knick-knack man, Clarky? I am. I acquire them without actually looking for them. So how good I am when I'm actually making a point of looking for yeah. them, I don't know. Performance poet John became famous during the heady days of punk, versifying on the same bill as many a seminal band. But never mind the buzzcocks. What does a bard put on his card? I like packaging. You know, like jars. I remember Woolwich used to do their own in-house version of Brill Cream. It was called Fixo, and it was in this gorgeous uh, frosted glass uh, oh. deco jar. Oh, wow. It's as good as Lalique. Yeah. Nowadays, Phil is known as an encyclopedic panel show legend and award-winning comedian. But he is also Porky the Poet. His inspiration, Dr John. You and me mum are why I'm doing this job. Yeah, because yeah. when I go home... And my mum's sat watching this show. Hello, mother, by the way. Say hello, my mum, Clarky. Hello, Mrs. Jupiter. She's always like, why aren't you on programmes like this? <laughs> A proper. Exactly. Class act. Rather than all that, all that late night whimsy on BBC hello. Two. So, yeah, I thought it'd be nice to get to grips with something my mother can enjoy. Quite right, too. Hello, Mrs. Jupiter. <laughs> Our pair in the back of the top class, Vanden Pla, manufactured before seat belts were mandatory, will have £400 each and a lot of savvy guidance on tap. So where we're driving is to meet our antiques experts. OK, who've we got? Is it a surprise? Sure, yeah. One thing I do know, it ain't Anita Manning. I took the trouble to ask about that. I like her, don't you? Yeah. He's even donned an Anita-style bonnet. But hopefully our pair will be equally chuffed with auctioneer James Braxton and dealer Stephanie Connell. How's the car room? How's it going? Uh, it's a bit scary, really. It looks like a baddie's car in a cop show. It, it looks like we've just robbed a bank. <laughs> and now we're on the run. The only problem is nowadays, you'd be hard-pressed to find a bank to rob, <laughs> wouldn't you? Probably already turned into an antique shop. Anyway, time to point the Pontiac towards Poet's Corner. Well, wherever you meet poets, they must be called that, mustn't they? Part of the service. Ah, <laughs> morning. Hi. Phil, Hi. nice to see you. James, All very right. good to meet you. Thanks, David. <laughs> Steph. <laughs> nice to meet Hello you. Hello there. Hi. Hi. This is very stylish arrival. I love it, yes. <laughs> Hello, James. James, hi. John. Hi. Philip, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Look what I've got for the rest of the journey. Look at that. Wow, Look at this wow. beastie, Kick eh? Yes. Right, but well, let the competition begin, shall we? All right. I'll Good. see you in the shelves. In the shelves. Yes, there'll be barely time enough to compose a haiku before they meet in the very first shop. Today's extravaganza begins in Panksworth and thoroughly explores both Norfolk and Suffolk before heading up towards the top corner of East Anglia and an auction at Bourne, Lincolnshire. Now, who's going to get there first? My money's on David. Go, Dave. I've never been chauffeur-driven before. Well, I'm always chauffeur-driven, but uh, usually whenever I get to where I'm going, I don't want to get out. You like cars that much? I love cars. There isn't a room in our house that is as comfortable as the car. You know, it's a completely adjustable world. Steph's having her own personal recital. John, do you collect any antiques? I wouldn't say antiques. I accumulate stuff, which I then 
put on one of my half a dozen plinths. If I collect anything, it's plinth. <laughs> got plinths on plinths? No, I haven't got plinths on plinths. That would be ridiculous. <laughs> Quite. But what about our other wordsmith? Anything devoutly to be wished? I'm not really a numismatist, but I do love a coin. Someone could have had it in their pocket. So I've got a buffalo head scent when I was in America. So when I hold it in my hand, I'm like, this coin could have been at like, the Battle of Antietam. Civil War, 1862. And I've got a two-headed Russian ruble that could have been at the Battle of Borodino. Napoleonic Wars, 1812. I give the coins that I pick up a fantasy life of their own. Yeah. Norfolk Reclamation. Ah, here we all are, look, in convoy. A close thing. Ice peeled for pennies and plinths. Thank you, David. Plenty of elbow room, too. These coins, what they're called, you know. Yeah? Coins. They're a bit heavy. Perfect bookends, though. Those books ain't going nowhere. Not coins. Brackets. Got to be half a ton each. <laughs> I'm not even talking about the price. <laughs> I'm talking about the weight. That reminds me. How are the big fellas? Oh, look at this. I mean, this is a piece of work, isn't it? Good Lord. Let me have a look down here. Go. Ruffer and Walker of Battersea. Knock this together. I do love games of chance. This, so, what, what, what a magnificent piece. It's a rotary merchandiser. Is, uh, it, is, is that what it is? Look, it says in the back there. Rotary merchandiser. Put the penny in. Oh, we're rolling. The bar pushes what you desire into the hole again. So what we have to do... This is very addictive. Let's yeah. try again. Oh, it's only a penny. Yes! Oh. Oh. Loves the coin, does Phil. To me, this is the equivalent of online gambling, but it back is. in the 1930s. They were in Lavender Hill, obviously, weren't well, they? <laughs> the more. The more. He's always on. Come on, let's, go. <laughs> let's carry on round here. Enough of pennies, time to spend the pounds. There's quite a choice, though. You're overwhelmed. You're... K yeah, kind of. Uh, I do like those four uh, Eames, pre-Eames, Preems chairs. Preems chairs. Yeah. I like those chairs. A sledge? This I like. You like a sledge? The sledge is good. Yeah? Yeah, well, it's also useful. I mean, it's utilitarian and uh, it's got loads of work left in it yet. It's nice, that. I think it's probably, it's what, 70s, 60s? Just rosebud. Yeah, rosebud. Rosebud. As in the favourite toy of Citizen Kane. Do you love it as much as Rosebud, though? Uh, no? Yeah, I think it's fantastic. That's a real speed vehicle if you've got the right snow conditions. How much is it, John? It is £115. Put it in the possibilities, can... yeah. Yeah, I like that. I think if it was about maybe half the price that it is currently, then okay. possibly. I think at 115 that it is, it's a bit rich. Should we keep looking? Yeah. We'll park that, hope it doesn't slide off. Dr John cooper Clark, winter sports fan. Whoever knew. Oh, it's gone. How's it gone? This, the thing is, is it must be very annoying for the people that work here yeah. that no-one can resist the gong. Oh, hello. What's this? What is that? It says... Bolton and Paul Works, Norwich, May the 20th, 1940. Today saw the completion of the millionth box. It took good teamwork and every man on top of his job. Well done. So, oh, so this is like a little staff commemoration at the Bolton and Paul Works of the millionth box being made. They're mostly profiles, as you can yeah, see. Yeah. This is the sort of thing I like. Do you? Stuff with a story, you know. Yeah. I'd love to know if this is original. Let's have a look at it. I've got a... So, oh, have you got your... I've got you... a jeweller's loop here. Yeah, I'll yeah, just yeah. take these off. What would you be looking for? Obviously, you can see... I'm looking for sort of some sort of pixelation. Yeah. It's jolly difficult to tell, you know. It's a lovely bit of commercial industrial history, isn't it? Yeah. But I think if it's a print, it, it still has value. Hmm. Um, but I think it's more like, you know, anything over... 20 quid and... I, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think you're in dangerous waters. Yeah, yeah. But it's very reflective of you and I think... Is, I don't yeah, see why yeah, we shouldn't yeah. have a stab at it. Yeah. All right, OK, yeah. Your aim, get it for under 20. OK. No, it's a print. I can see now, yeah. Print. It's a print. That's a shame. Time to talk to Russell. Russell, we finally found something. Yeah, yeah. this piece here. Well, yeah, a bit of local history there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bolton Pool, Norwich area. So how much is this... 
got a well, price in mind? I would see that as possibly making anywhere between 10 and 30 pounds. Give us the bad news. I was at 50 pounds. Really? Oh, Nelly. Yeah. Are we going to try and meet somewhere in the middle of that? Find your inner heritage. Yeah, right, OK. Give me a laugh, we'll give you a tenner. Is that what you do? That's lovely. Another ten pounds are 40. What? 40? Well, 40? 40 do me a favour, it's not even a look, look. Look, the only original thing on is that pencil signature. You're like, I'll give you 15. You're, you're having a rustle. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. There he is, Russell. You see, see? You're having a rustle. I, I don't know, is this how you do it? Yes, yes. And also, what do you have to also do? pause. Pause? Don't fill the spaces. OK. You said 15. And I'll go 30. Pause. 20. Pause. Yeah. Give you a fighting chance, we'll do it then. Mate! Well you, done. It's a wise decision, Thank you, my Russell. friend. That was fun. What's this? Oh, oh hello. Okay. Look, yeah. There yeah. we are. <laughs> now, while <laughs> those two make for the motor, with one by under their belts... Onwards. It looks like John spotted something else. Step. Yeah? Step. Seen this drinks trolley. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Why struggle? Why, so, why go out when you can stay? Yeah, in? exactly. I like these kind of drinks trolleys. They're really fashionable at the minute. Are drinks they? Trolleys, especially brass ones. People like them. They drink is this at home. brass? This is, yeah. Oh, it's lost one of its shelves. It Did it ever have, have any tyres? <laughs> it's got oh, the it's groove. got tyres. Yeah, I think it's vulcanised rubber, yeah. isn't it? Did you look at the price? Yes, I think it's three ninety. Well, we need it to be cheaper than that, but I like that. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? I seem to be developing a fondness for vehicles here. In-house transport. <laughs> yeah, there's Rosebud the sledge, remember? There's loads up there. I can't quite see what's up. Oh, that dog. You like the dog? It is a dog, isn't it? It's got canine teeth. And you said you like fairground stuff. Yeah, I love fairground stuff. Yeah, so yeah, great. I, love, I, I also love dogs. Well, do be careful, you two. Oh, these are cool, aren't they? They're really nice. Yeah, yeah, they're, but the, that's the one. The you like dog. the dog? The junkyard dog. You like the junkyard I dog? I love the dog. I think he's better. Rover. Rover. That's what I call You've it. You've named it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put a name to that face. <laughs> Hold the good. bed and not the elephant, then. Very good. Thank you very much. <laughs> you saved my life there, Steph. Oh, yeah, this one, this is an adorable attack dog. <laughs> with a lolling tongue. I think he'd probably do all right at auction because he's so unusual. Its mouth goes right round the corner. He's getting a bit flaky, but that's part of his charm. They haven't got any prices on, they just say NR on the label. No rabies, no reserve. Should we go downstairs and see how much he is? That would be helpful. Yeah. Quite a list they have now. Be careful. Dan's the man to speak Hello. to. We've seen a few things we like. Principally, the thing we saw that we liked that didn't have a price on was the fairground dog. Yeah, well, I've got a few of them. They've been kicking back a little while, to be honest. So it'd be good to get them moved out of the way. You can yeah. have hundred pound each. Oh, you want to take the dog for hundred pounds? Yeah. Is it going to go for this? Well, should we ask about all the other things and then we can? Yeah. yeah. So the other things that we saw that we liked yeah. were the sledge. That's hundred and fifteen on the ticket, I think. Okay. What can you see yourself going to? Fifty pounds. You can have it. OK. Wow. You all right? Is that good? Yeah, yeah that's, that's a deal. Good, yeah. And then the final thing that we wanted was the drinks trolley that's missing a glass shelf. Do you want to tell us your best price on that? Because we haven't got, um, unfortunately, haven't got a massive budget. £125. For the trolley? For the trolley. Oh, wow, that's good. So yeah, for all three good. things, that's £275. That sounds like a pretty good deal, don't you think? Your result, yeah. Yeah, yeah? yeah, yeah you yeah, want to yeah. shake on it? Yeah, I will. Yeah. He's off to a big spending start. One century. Two centuries. Do you got change of a tenner, my friend? Don't worry about it, mate. What a mensch. All right. Thank you so very much. Quite. Now, just £270. And while David whisks them off to their next shop... Hang on. Don't forget Rover. Let's catch up with the muscle machine. What I remember from my childhood driving around Norfolk was a uh, very primal memory of always of eh, hitting the horn before going round the corner. Yeah, my right. very, very cautious father. <laughs> eh, and what? we got pancake by a tractor. <laughs> what? This oh, is yeah. Uh, tractors permitting, they're about to take a wee detour to find out more about a group of painters who were inspired by the uniquely flat countryside around these parts. A little bird tells me you are an artist. I, well, burgeoning, as it were. I'm, yeah. um, I'm off to um, start studying art soon, so I'm going to go to university and do an art degree. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. What's your medium? Is it pen well, and ink? Well, I'm looking for my medium, James. I've dabbled with painting. 
uh, but I was a cartoonist to start with. Most of the work I do lately has been collage work. So a life, life of chatter of about chit -chat, to be... Of chit-chat. <laughs> Beautifully truncated. Uh, Phil's foundation year starts here with a visit to Norwich, the capital of East Anglia, and the castle which houses the City Museum, where they've come to see the works of John Cotman. It's supposed to be like walking into their head, in a way, isn't it? It is. <laughs> Amazing. Cotman was one of the leading members of the Norwich School, a group of self-taught, working-class artists who, in the early 19th century, created a distinctive provincial art movement. As curator, Dr Giorgia Bottinelli oh, yeah. can explain. So the thing that I have to ask, and now having seen this extraordinary work, is why isn't Cotman more widely known? That's a very good question, because Cotman was born in 1782 here in Norwich. By the age of 16, he moves to London. He starts frequenting interesting art circles, and he starts exhibiting at the Royal Academy every single year between 1800 and 1806. Then he suffers a disappointment and returns to Norwich, yeah. and he then never, ever exhibits at the Royal Academy ever again. Despite being a contemporary of both Constable and Turner, a snub by the Society of Painters in Watercolours led to Cotman spending the remainder of his career in relative obscurity. Back home, he earned a living as a drawing master and soon became president of the Norwich School. The main characteristic of his art was the fact that it was very dispassionate. There was nothing romantic about it. There was nothing picturesque. There was nothing pretty. He yeah. looked at art and I think he saw geometry, he saw figures, he saw shapes. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's part of the reason why his art wasn't that much loved at the time and it wasn't really until modernism that people looked at yeah. his work again and thought wow this right, is amazing yeah. and that's why in the early 20th century his fame skyrocketed because when he died there were no obituaries there was nothing um, he just died and that was it nowadays Cotman's work has achieved the fame he so fervently desired especially his watercolors which have sold in recent years for many thousands of pounds and now Phil's education continues down by the inspirational Norfolk Broads in the company of local watercolourist Nikki Saunders. So I'm going to drop in some water here yeah. with the side of the brush, using the whole side of the brush. Yeah, yeah. We're then going to pick up a nice blue and we're just going to drop that in. We're using a wet and wet technique here, yeah. which was actually um, perfected and used by the Norwich School of Painters in their work when they were working outside. It's so, not very delicate, is it? No. She's just sloshing just... away there. Sloshing. <laughs> if I did that when I was a kid, you just end up with a generic single muddy colour, but this is layering different intensities of colour. That's extraordinary. Okay. Sorry, are you going okay? <laughs> Not very well. You can wow. do this, Phil. No fear, just go straight for it. Yeah, never mind the brush strokes, eh? And there's a grey there. Use the whole side of your brush. Oh, yeah, the whole yeah, side the thing. Yeah, the whole side thing. Okay. I'm digging this. Oh, that's good. Well done. Excellent. I'm getting trees, there. Huh? You're just 200 years too late, Phil. You are. This is You superb. could have been part of the movement. That's weird, man. <laughs> That's insane. I think your first is within yeah. your grasp. Stop it now. <laughs> As the paint dries, you begin to have more and more control and it will start to stay in exactly the places really? where you want it to be. Oh, look at this. Very brave. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's a slightly drier brush. Yes. Have courage. Look at that. Something about that. There's something about it. Right. Maybe some grasses in the foreground would help here, okay. like what we have here. Going cadmium. Yes, all right? cadmium's lovely. Thanks. Phil's mum will be proud. So now comes a time in any painting that you have to stand back and assess it and decide whether or not you've finished your painting. Palette drop! <laughs> Finish my painting. <laughs> Lordy. Very dramatic, wasn't it? It was a little, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> They're very highly strung, these artists, aren't they? <laughs> Hang on, what about the ducks? Now, the last time we glimpsed Dr John and his companion, they were busy buying in barns. Where there's muck, there's brass, so I yeah, think we bought some dirty things, so they might, we clean them up. <laughs> <laughs> we might make some money. I'm impressed we got up those ladders to go and find that dog. It's not often you go up a ladder to retrieve a dog. No, I watch the programme regularly and I've never seen anybody <laughs> climb up a ladder until now, no. Well, their next task is much more straightforward. 
to seek out an antique or two in the medieval town of Wyndham, where the Market Cross burnt down in the Great Fire of 1615, but was soon rebuilt for £25 and 7 shillings. For them, £130 left to spend. An Aladdin's cave of out-of-date accoutrement. <laughs> well put, much better than what I was going to say, innit? Nice clock. Now, I found this old builders and plumbers merchants catalogue. It's got all the different hardware you could have bought. But it's also got loads of really nice oh, other... Oh, yeah, 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 Menders, yeah. They used to do printing inks. Did they? Yeah, yeah. Because you used to be in printing. I was a professional compositor back in the day, yes. I just thought you'd like it, because I know you like... Yeah, I see, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, this is... Uh, I also like specialist kind of language, so... I would probably dip into this book quite a lot if I had it, but, you, John, you know, not everybody's like me. Oh, look at that garage. Golmet roll doors, would it? Make any money at auction? With books, it depends very much on is it a rare one. It is cool and interesting, but I think it probably wouldn't make much money. Oh, wow! Oh, no, I love those glass bricks. The corner block. In fact, if I found a glass brick in here, I'd buy that. <laughs> yeah. I'd buy a glass brick. Take it to the counter. Counter intelligence. You got, you got any of these? You got any of these? Yeah. In counter intelligence. Very good. I see what you did there, Steph. Let's ask one of the intelligent counter staff. Steph's a poet. You just don't know it. Hey, Steph, look at this. What have you found? Girl guide's pocket knife. Oh, that's sweet. Don't leave home without it. Getting stones out of horses' hooves. I quite like that. It's very kind of industrial practical. That's right. No, that's totally, utterly utilitarian, isn't it? It is. I assume it's 50s, but it's got some good age to it. Why do you like it so much? Do you like pocket knives? I do like pocket knives, yeah, but I particularly like this one because I suspect that the girl guides are not issued with knives anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ten pounds. Yeah, I think that's going to make a couple of quid. Do you? Over to Donna in counterintelligence. Hi. 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 We found this, uh, this artefact here and uh, I think that's a very reasonable price. You've fallen in love with it a little bit. I have, you? I have. So I'm going to pay you the full... Very fair asking <laughs> price for Oh, it. that's brilliant. Ten pounds? Yep, that's great. It won't Pleasure. take up any boot space Thank at all. You. No, Thank you very much. Thank you Lovely. very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks very much. So much. Thanks. And that wee knife is our very last purchase of the day. Time to let David do what he does so well. So tomorrow, what are our tactics going to be, do you think? Spend, spend, spend. Yeah? Get rid of it. There's no point keeping it, is there? No, it's only going to go down in value. <laughs> Antique money. Who needs it? <laughs> Night. Next day, our balladeers recite a familiar refrain. I saw an Art Deco chair in that place yesterday. They wanted eight long and just for wow, eight thousand for an Art Deco no. chair. No, blimey, was it off the Queen Mary? How much do you want to sit down? No, give me. How much do you want to sit down? <laughs> well, there's one sure way to stop a poet from overspending: yeah. prose. Get it away to travel, isn't it? I shall go and let Dr. Clark out of the car. There you are, sir. Go round. Morning, Phil. Yeah, How are you? Doing? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Good. Yeah, very good. Ah, oh, the morning. James, the competitor. Oh, yeah. Hello, Phil. Yes, good to morning, see you. John. Good morning, John. Shall we reveal all? Please do. This Bing. is. Uh, oh. We got this. Oh, blimey. Doesn't oh. look a lot, I know, but. We've got some gold there. That is the staff of Bolton and Paul, who made boxes in Norwich in the 1940s. Right. And this is a print of all the lads that worked at the factory to celebrate the manufacture of their one millionth box. Yeah. Right. We salute the workforce. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, which of John's four purchases are concealed in the princess? Oh, hello. Rosebuds. Rosebud. Rosebud. Uh, Winter Olympics. John, is that a big interest of yours? Well, I'm a speed maniac and, uh, <laughs> Let me think about an answer for this. <laughs> He's not usually lost for words. Uh, do you knock him down on it? Yeah, we got what? it for less than half. Yours is absolutely vital for probably two days every three years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not going to perish with overuse. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, I think we've got some work to do. To yeah. Catch these boys up, I we? know, yeah, yeah. So we'd better be getting on, on then, I think. Go on, yes. Let's... And when it comes to exactly what's owed, get it? Phil does have an awful lot of cash left, having parted with a mere £20. Lovely, thank you very much, driver. Whilst John 
who was certainly not shopping averse. Get it? He has £120 left to spend today. Who writes this stuff? What did you think of what Phil and James had bought? Yeah, I liked it. They used to get these uh, caricaturists in pubs that would get you down on the back of a beer mat, you know what yeah. I mean? It was very much in that style. Yeah, it was good. Thumbs up. What about Smokey and the Bandit? Interesting purchase from the opposition. Well, I mean, Steph's complete and utter nonplussed. Oh, at my print. Is that like antique dealer sledging? That is sledging. I, I mean, think. this from a woman oh. who let a citizen of Salford buy a sledge in yeah. July. Well, we'll discover just how that turns out when they reach the Fenside auction at Bourne, Lincolnshire. But the first stop of today's itinerary is in Harleston, a delightful Georgian market town where Phil has a bit of catching up to do. Oh, here we go. There we go. At the old corn exchange. Oi, oi. Morning. Good morning. Morning. Yeah. morning. Lovely light, Phil. Good morning. It's Thank you. A very tardis vibe. Isn't it? Well, I think we should split up. You go that way and I'll take the ride. Yeah. Okie dokie. £380 available, remember, although there's plenty here to tempt our pair. So this is a 1950s sandwich set. I like practical history, so that idea that in the post-war years. It was a brave new world where we weren't under rationing and we could go out and have picnics. And presumably you'd use your Liddell's sandwich set to lay out a lovely uh, picnic or a tea at the back of the house with your napkins here. And these napkins are kind of cool as well. The bags don't appear to be there, but it's the napkins and the markers. I think it's unused. And it's... It's only 28 quid. Can't wait to tell his chum. Ahoy, hoy, there. Hello. Put your pottery down. This is actually the two millionth box made by... <laughs> <laughs> Bolton and Paul. Have you no, noticed that. my is theme? <laughs> no, this in here. Here we go, here we go. This is the Liddell That's sandwich set. Terribly smart. Yeah. So it's got the pins for the sandwiches to denote what's in them. Look, look at the sardine oh, one. I there. love look, that, with the, the key. The sardine key, hugely over-yoked eggs. Yeah. And the napkins correspond. No, no, I see, yeah. This is a wedding present that, yeah. you know, never got unwrapped, is yes, it? I think it might be. Behind Name the this. cheese. This is Jarlsberg, don't be a fool. <laughs> so... <laughs> no, no, it's not holy. Is Jarlsberg holy? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Gruyere. Is it a Gruyere? Edam. You're watching Spot the Cheese here on the BBC. <laughs> if you know which cheese this is, then call our hotline now. I think it's lovely. I think yeah. it's beautifully displayed. Yeah. I love the fact that it's totally intact. I'm a great lover of the egg sandwich. Yeah. I, didn't, I, I, I didn't think that was where we'd end up. <laughs> I would go for it. I was, when I saw that it was 28, I thought 40, 50. Before we buy that, can I show you something else as well? I found something. Is it another sandwich recipe? No, it's fruit-based, though. <laughs> Trencherman, those two. Phil, I found this item here. Yes. A shop display. Oh, wow. Counter, presumably for chocolates. Uh, Do you think? Bars of chocolates? Indeed, I'd imagine so, yeah. It's an incredibly heavy door. All that is, isn't it? I know it's got to be quite heavy because of the boldness of the glass, but it yeah. seems unusually heavy to me. Well, you have to imagine that you're a cheeky scamp four-year-old and you're thinking, I'm going to go down the sweet shop and steal a bar of chocolates for my lovely grandmother. <laughs> and then your tiny little hands, oh, because you're reaching up as well. Yeah. There's no way yeah. that a young, tiny person could lift that. So it's an adult weight lid. I would say this item is pre-Second World War, so from 1900, to the 30s. Ticket price, £250. I think it's good enough to buy, don't you? Oh, yeah, it's a beaut. It's an absolute beaut, I think. If we get my brilliant Olympian sandwich set... I think when we go to auction, they'll say, these are men of taste. They'll say we're men of something. <laughs> Indeed. Let's have a word with proprietor Charlie. Uh -huh. Step away from the ledger, sir. Hello, oh. Phil Jupiter. Oh, good to you? see you, Phil. All right, yeah. James, Hello, James. Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, well, what a lovely, lovely place you've got here. Thank and you very we've much. already found a, a little uh, item here that we shall be oh. taking off your hands. Perfect. If you I want a little peek at that? that? Yeah. yeah. That's, uh... See the sandwich set? Oh, yeah. I like Isn't that. that fun? So I will put that's that lovely. to one side for you. Yeah, that's our gamble. Good, good. And you your curvy glass lid chocolate cabinet. £250 on that. Yeah. Which is a very good price. Yeah. For whom? 
Uh, <laughs> clearly, you'd like to haggle. Was, well, I, I, I would. I would indeed. He's teaching me how to haggle. Okay. Well, in, in, in the tradition. Yeah, in the tradition, OK. Yeah. How do, what do I do? I'd no. just throw something out there. You, you never know. I could go down to 200. You could go to 200? That's not 50 quid off, which is quite good. Yeah. yeah. Jolly 190? Do you know what? I'm not even going to haggle with five pounds. One ninety, that'll do. One ninety. One ninety. Look at you. Thank you. All right, Thank you're welcome. If only I'd understood a word <laughs> what you said just then. Shake the man's hand. All the best. Thank He's you. learning Thank fast. You. Right, so one ninety and my dude are there. So twenty-eight on yeah, that. So, so one eighty. Come again, Charlie. Two eighty. Two eighty. Oh, I, th I thought this was more weird haggling. <laughs> One hundred and sixty-two to go. Now, where are those wheels? I think we've got good workers. Happened this morning. Yeah, yeah. Good work. And and that extra tenner that you got off could be crucial. Yeah. Oh, you like to announce yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but as the throaty roar recedes, where has our altogether more sophisticated mode of transport got to? Suffolk, actually. Looks nice, doesn't it? Flattish. Can you dance, John? Are you a dancing-type oh. person? Over the years, I've considered my hours on the dance floor to be golden. Have you? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty That's good. So my rules of dancing are this. Keep your feet still and express yourself with the rest of your uh, physique. OK, that's a good tip. And what do you know about jig dolls? Nothing. Well, fret not, because your questions will be answered in the village of Bedfield where, at the local pub, folk regularly gather to enjoy a very East Anglian form of entertainment. Music played on a dulcimer and danced by a jig doll. Adrian. Hello. Hi, I'm Steph. Nice Hi, to meet Steph. you. Hi, Steph. Adrian. Oh, hi, John. Hi. Hi. Like many a local before him, Adrian continues the jig doll tradition. These ones have come from the Museum of East Anglian Life, and this one was made by a local chap. As you can see, they're all different. They're all handmade. They've all got jointed arms and legs. And sometimes other bits move as well. This one is mine. When I was given this one, the chap who made it said he tried to impart a bit of the character of the new owner into the likeness of this, but I'm not quite sure <laughs> where that went. Where did jig dolls originate and why? I think they probably became quite popular because there's this thing about all the chaps going down to the pub. If you could play an instrument, or you could sing people would buy you a drink. If you couldn't do anything much else, then if you brought a jig doll and could perform with that, then you basically got a free drink. So it's an elaborate beer ticket. It is. <laughs> That's right. Would you like to have a go, John? At yeah. That, at my jig doll. Oh. And uh, put that underneath. That's it. So keep him still and just bounce the board. I get the picture. Yep. That's it. Here we go. <laughs> this guy's a regular Fred Astaire. Like a dancing equivalent of the ventriloquist's dummy. <laughs> Don't you should get a jig dolly for Yeah, I'm, I'm a damn hand over here. But you could get one that looked like you, could you? That's a good idea. I'm very easy to work uh, kind of caricature. But the accompaniment to this odd local ritual, the dulcimer, has roots which extend even further into antiquity, as Adrian's wife Sue can explain. We think it originated from Italy came over with a lot of Italian immigrants in about the 19th century who came over to work in Norwich. And it just took off and it spread throughout East Anglia. Um, and it's not really in the rest of the country. Why do you think this instrument has gained such popularity, uh, particularly in East Anglia? Well, I, I think they're not difficult to get a nice sound out of. We have beaters like this. This is typically East Anglian, are made of cane and bent, and then some people put wool on they make a different sound. And you just lightly bounce it. Oh, it's a very simple little tune. And now time to put dulcimer and jig doll together in an appropriate setting, of course. This is a terrific rhythm instrument, isn't it? Cheaper than a drummer, better than a washboard. Looks like everyone can cut a rug round here. There must be something in the water. <laughs> Digging, jiggy and keeping tradition alive. Bravo. 
Meanwhile, elsewhere in the county, there's knickknacks to be nabbed. The thing is about driving around in this car is I don't know if we're supposed to be buying antiques or fighting crime. <laughs> Get them, Phil. Top three sandwiches, go. Uh, egg sandwich. Egg, yeah. I think an avocado and bacon. Slightly modern, yeah. Uh, ham and mustard. Look at that. Right, OK, so mine, the tuna melt with finely sliced red onion and uh, mango chutney. Oh, Fish finger sick. sandwich, cheapest fish fingers you can get, cheapest bread you can get. Really? A little bit of tomato sauce. Yeah. And cheddar cheese with sliced beetroot and salad cream on crusty bloomer. Really? Yeah. I've yeah. never had that. Mine. They must be feeling a bit peckish. Shopping first, though, just outside the village of Yoxford, with £162 in Phil's pocket. Here we are. Still, at least we don't look massive and ungainly getting out of the no, car. No, no, right? no, we yeah. are elegantly done. Oh, isn't it, they? though? Yeah. yeah. Plenty of room inside, chaps. Over 70 dealers represented here could be a dilemma. Lass, or Yorick, what do you think of it so far? No, it doesn't work. We've got a really big, weird Humphrey Bogart. But what caught my eye on the shelf here, ladies and gentlemen, is this item. Queen Mum, ferret collector. It's a lovely image there of an old lady with three ferrets. It says it's Peggy Davis. It's a limited edition. She's rumoured to be able to eat nine at a single sitting, so this, is for her, is just a snack. So, uh, that's... Uh, Lovely little item over there. Peggy Davies was, of course, the designer of that Dalton figurine. But while they continue to sky Yoxford... Carry on. I'm just doing my own thing over here. Right. <laughs> what a team they make, eh? Our other top duo, well, trio, counting David, are also getting shoppy with it. You can get many items for one lot. That's something I picked up watching the show. Yeah. Uh, put in... A package to get yeah. one artifact being in the same park as another. Yes. So say you had the knife and we found some other guiding thing. Some a compass. Compass would go. Stopwatch. Yeah, any, <laughs> a tent. Well, those happy campers could turn up just about anything in Needham Market. Oh, that looks a good shot. Vinyl. Yep, all sorts. Just over a hundred left to spend, too, which does rule out a few big ticket items. It's a thousand pounds. So we can't afford it. Do you want to have a game of it, though? Good oh. idea. Oh. oh, let's try some skill. Oh, I scored hey, an oh, old oh goal. Oh, gee, oh, gee. I need more of them. Oh, no! Ah. Oops. Oh, now we're stuck. Come on. Hey, I'm calling foul. Oi, no rocking. It's a bit let's like go a... for it. Yeah, man, hit me with your best shot. <laughs> 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 Don't say I'll never do you any favour. <laughs> Poetic justice, you might say. <laughs> How's your stand-up getting on in Yoxford? I'm going to take you on a little trip. I'm going to take you to the Caucasus now. Mm -hmm. And we've got the hot colours. And it looks very bright. It's a lovely uh, rug. Yeah. It's got uh, principal colours of the, from the madder root, that red. And then turn it over, because you don't want it to be machined. Yeah, yeah. That feels quite nice and tight to me, yeah, and yeah. it's not machined. So uh, how can you tell that, because of your skilled nails? Skilled nails and, uh, you know, many R's in the soups. The, the Caucasus now, you know, between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea, mm -hmm. of course they found oil and, you know, this, this nomadic rug weaving way of life is now disappearing. OK. I have not I'm... thought of rugs, but I'm, I'm not averse to the idea. Now, we're seeing it on a blue ground, and I think the blue is quite draining. If I could yeah. just take you, just imagine you're... Wow! You're the wealthy client, OK? OK. Here we go. Come with me. I'm going to take you outside. Let, let's see it in that, in that hot sunlight, you know. Yeah. Let's try and recreate the Caucasus. Oh! And I think... Well, they're already the colours on the... Whoa! Look at that. That's popping now. Just popping, isn't it? You know this stuff, my friend. Look at that. You see, if you want to introduce colour yeah. into a minimal home, yeah. get yourself a rug. Yeah. Isn't it? Lovely. Do they shift at auction, your rugs? Yeah, they can do. Not overconfident, is he? 180 on the ticket. You stay here. Yeah, yeah. Let it stay here, because I spied something. Just to compliment the contemporary home. Oh, you know, yeah. What style survives all trends? And it's the blessed art deco. The deco of decos. The great deco wood is the burr walnut. Lovely light colour. Mmm. Pot cupboard. Ooh. Keep all your essentials in there. Absolutely. I'm loving the book nook in the top there. 
you could have that next to a favourite chair. Yeah. Keep a, an improving volume in here. Yeah, yeah. Coaster and a nice cup of tea on cup the top tea. there. Your mobile charging. No, no, no. We're taking them back to a time, a halcyon period, okay, before okay. the mobile phone. No, Don't be spoiling it. This is probably between 1920s yeah, and yeah. 1930s. Yeah. And I think I could get this cheap. You reckon? Yeah. yeah. I think if we're going to make some money, it needs to be 25 to 35. Ticket price, £65. I'm just going to get Nigel and I'm going to give you lesson two on bartering. Good, your loins. Phil, so, yeah. oh. I bring you Nigel. Ha, Nigel. Hi, Phil, lovely nice to see nice you. Nice to see you, sir. After much searching, yeah. we have alighted on a rug and a bedside table. Beautiful rug, James. Beautiful. Geometric. Beautiful. 80 for that, 25 for that. You know the Oxford Antiques discount oh, policy, James. James. You've heard about it. 10%. Oh, yeah. draconian. But, Philip, mm. these are my items. So yeah. I can do what I like. I'll do the rug for 90. 90, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'll yeah. do the pot cupboard for 30. Now, that's very close to what you offered, so I don't think you can complain. And Nigel, it'd be rude. 120 for the two. Take it. I don't know, I'm waiting for you to do some shaking. weird end-of-the-deal whittling. <laughs> no. Oh, no, we've shaken on it. We've shaken. It's happened. We've shaken. Yes, a very swift conclusion. Pleasure. All bought up, though. Now, wither John and Steph in Needham Market. I found this thing that I think, hopefully, fingers crossed, you will think is cool. It is a child's toy that is a Baker-like 1930s telephone. Should we have a seat so you can have a look at it properly? So, it's got two phones which I believe may have worked, because it says they're real instruments capable of transmitting over a reasonable distance and clarity if rigged up correctly. Oh, wow, yeah, I like this. I used to uh, be the owner of a Dick Tracy two-way wrist radio, and I suspect this is uh, on Same similar technology. lines. But mine had a buzzer on it. You could talk to somebody in the next, next room. Next room. It's very Art Deco in its oh, look, yeah, it's isn't a it? classic, Baker classic like. phone. Get me Scott and ya! <laughs> It's very English, isn't it? Oh, it is. It's, you know, Paul Semple. Yeah. Can you get Ask 412 for me, please, operator? The price is £53. So we can afford it. Yeah. We might be able to give it a bit of a haggle. Well, I love it. Do you? Yeah, I think it's terrific. I... Better than a real phone. It is better than a real It's much cooler. <laughs> I mean, you can't talk to anybody on it, but that's all right. That's the beauty of it. <laughs> they do have grown-up phones as well, though. So we've got that one. And it's glamorous, the ivory phone. Oh. Yeah, that's nice, that. Especially converted so it can actually be used. That's a serious piece of kit. No, it's great, that, that is a like totally it. deco phone, that, isn't it? What's the damage here? £160, so it's more than what we have. But we could try and do a deal for both, and if they can't do it, then we could see if you want to take one or the other. Do you want to do that? Yeah. Yes, but will Pauline... Hello, Pauline. Good afternoon. Uh, we found two things that we like. What would be the best price for the two phones? I think we could possibly do about 40 on that one. Right. And about 140 on the cream one. OK. I'll be honest with you, we've only got £120. So that's all the money we have in the whole wide world. It's okay. so OK. We can only go to 170 For the two. For the two. What in your heart of hearts is your favourite one? What do you want to go with, you think? Well, this is real cute, but that's beautiful. So, with that in mind, if we park that one off to one side, and you know our budget now, but what would be the best price on that on its own? The would best you be able to do it go to 120 on that one. Yeah. All right, you happy? 120 on that one. You happy with that, John? I certainly am, yes, yeah? thank you yes. very much. All right, okay. lovely. So, they've now spent the lot. Pauline, it was a pleasure doing business with you. <laughs> with you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Time to get off to that auction. Have you been to many auctions before? I've been to one auction and it was uh, 40 years ago. Oh, really? And I bought a set of kendo armour. What inspired you to buy a set of kendo armour? Well, it was, it was exotic and uh, I was a big fan of the movies of uh, Akira Kurosawa. Yeah. I thought uh, sooner or later some anthropologist is going to make me an offer for this. That didn't happen, by the way. That anthropologist didn't ever call. never showed up. Oh, no. Oyasumi Nasai. Well, this is the place. I suppose this could be the Bourne ultimatum. Gosh, David's changed. Hello, Davina. Off to auction, Dr. Clark. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. Showdown. This is it. I've got to wish you the best there, Well, doctor. me too. You Jeff, know, coming mate. back at you, I know. They couldn't have picked two less competitive men with each other on that. The only thing that you and I are warring over is who's going to be the first to write that poem. Where's Paul Weller's wellies? <laughs> After starting out in Norfolk and heading into Suffolk, our poets and their muses have limoed to Lincolnshire at Golding Young and more, to be precise, with internet bidding. Thank you. There you are, sir. Here we are, sir. Oh, oh James. There we are. I hope he wasn't expecting a tip. <laughs> Phil's splashed 358 of his £400 on five auction lots. Oh, this is fantastic. Well, that's a heavy, heavy, heavy door. It's a quality confectioner's display cabinet. That's fabulous. I wouldn't be surprised if it makes £150, £200. I think it's really nice. You reckon? Yeah. John, of course, spent everything, all 400 also on five lots. This is the prize loss, isn't it? This... Yeah, I can see the appeal. Mm. You know what, I always like to think... I could see the fairground being somewhere where John might have ended up, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. because he's got a vagabond spirit. Yeah. And it's the most harrowing fairground dog I think I've ever seen. Okay. Well, with Lincolnshire auctioneer Colin Young already hammering, the slam starts here. Here we all are, on our uh, cold chairs. Are you excited? Yeah, are you? Yeah, really excited. Yeah, curious. Terrifying. <laughs> now, John's very keen on the symbolist poets, but Phil and James like symbols on their sarnies. Huh? Eggs for egg sandwiches. Ham, salmon, tomatoes. Oh, can't wait. 30 pounds, everybody, 30. 30 pounds, everybody, 30. 20 to go then, surely 20 pounds. It's vintage, it's retro, it's retro, it's vintage. Start me at 10. 10 pounds, everybody, 10 bit of beer, 10. 12 no, do I see it? 10 bit of beer, 12 no, surely. At 10, we're just a few bits short of a picnic. 12, 15 now. 15 bit, 15 bit, 18 bit, 18 bit, 20 now. 18 bit of beer, 20 for anybody else now. 18 bit of beer, we're all going to join in now. 18 pound back row has it. At 18 pounds, we all done. Hammers up at 18 pounds. Last call then, you've all seen it, all viewed it. Sold at oh, 18 pounds. There weren't many bits for the butties, John. No, they were very thinly spread. I've got to find out who's bought it so I can buy it back off them. <laughs> I want a picnic in the 1950s. And I want, I want someone to go, tomato? And then the thing be in it. That never happened now. Telephone for Dr. Clark. His first lot. I could see uh, that cord being used, used to strangle Tippy Hedren. Got to be 50 pounds. 50, 30 will do then. 30 pounds, anyone? 30. Summit at 10. It'd be a miserable oh start. God. 10 bid. 20, 12 now. At 12 to 12, 15 bid. 15, 18, 18, 20, 20 bid. 2 bid. 5 bid. 5 bid. 8 now. 28, 30, 30, 30 bid. 2 bid. 5, 38. 38 bid, 40 now, 38 put a bid, 40 for anybody else now, 38, the bid's down here then, 38, 40 online, 40 bid, 42 now. That's uh, 40 good, we appear to have lost connection, madam. 42, 42 if you wish, no, 40 put a bid, the bid's online, they're at 40, hammer's up then, we're done, we're finished, the room's out. Selling at 40. Sold. Oh, 40. sorry, John, that was a big loss. Um, how big much loss. would you pay? 120. No! Yes, it is a bit of a gobsmacker. What are we, what's going on? Phil's biggest gamble's up next. Will it pay off? Two hundred pounds. Two hundred. My antenna. Two hundred pounds bid in the room. Two hundred twenty now. Surely two hundred pound a bid at two hundred two twenty two forty two sixty two eighty at two eighty and three and twenty three twenty three forty forty three sixty three sixty three eighty at three eighty three eighty now. Do I see three eighty? It's a sweet lot. Oh. <laughs> oh, very good. Any more now? Thank you very much. Three eighty. Three ninety four. Four, got to be worth 400 pounds. 400 pounds is a great thing. 400 bid, any more now? 420 is bid. What? Any more now? At 420 bid, 420. Any more now then? 420 is bid online, I'll offer you 430. 430, it's a wise choice. 440 bid. Four, that was a definite no, wasn't it? At 440 bid, 50 for anybody else. This, this is uncharted At territory. Really? Up, I don't traditionally make profits. At 400 and I'm not going to rely on 400. Well done, oh, guys. That's oh, amazing. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Good eye, eh? Good man. <laughs> wow. Well, Mrs. Jupiter, what do you make of that? That's very good. My so work is off. done. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it. You're nicking off now. No, don't do that. Let's see if John can earn his auction badge with this item. I reckon we're on a winner there. I reckon we're going to get a Lady Godiva on you top of that one, yeah. As any girl guide knows, Lady Godiva means a fiver. Who's going to start me at a bidding £30? I like the 30. Marlin spike. Yeah. £20. Surely you all remember the guide promise. I will bid hard. 
10 pounds. For getting 10 pounds. 10 pounds. 10 pounds. 10 pounds. 10 pounds. 12, 12 bid, 15 bid, 15 bid, 18 now. At 15 pounds, he's bid. 15, 18 for anybody else now. At 15, we're on the market looking for a multi purpose tool. At 15 pounds, we're all done and finished. Nobody else is going to cut it. That's a. That'll be no then. Sold. Five pound profit. I told you. Yeah, you said you'd. You did. Lady Godiva it is. Would that 14, have been worn from a lanyard? Got the, the clues in the title. It's a pocket. Uh, oh. Phil's favourite. The man who made that historic box. One thing about the print is you say it's a good likeness, but we don't know who any of the people are, so, so it might not be. I can only assume they're excellent likenesses. Because <laughs> yeah. everyone looked like that in the 1940s. Right, and I've but noticed a couple, well, of, couple of lookalikes in there. There's a Robert so, Donut. Who's going to start me then at £50? 50, anybody? 50? £50. £50. £50 pound bid. £55 now, do I see it? £50 pound bid. £50 pound bid. £50 pound bid. £55 now. £50 pound bid. £5 for anybody else. At £50 pound, are we all done? At £5 now, do I see? At £50. Surely somebody else is going to join in. At £50, pounds, well, it's a maiden bid. That is it. We're all done. We're finished. And that seems to have boxed it off at £50 pounds and done oh. finished at £50. Thank you very much. You're making out like bandits. You are? <laughs> we are bandits. All strictly above board, John. We concentrated on the haggling. <laughs> Me. I was, I was this guy. This yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was literally standing there operating me like a big meat puppet. Why didn't you do that? <laughs> Why did you take so much notice of it? Ah, the celebrity conundrum. Another of John's choices next. They're very on trend, very fashionable, but I don't know if this is the correct audience for that fashionableness. Who's going to start me then at uh, 50 pounds? 50 anybody? 50 pounds for the trolley? 50 pounds anyone? 50? It's going to be 50. Nice retro look about it. 50. 30 to go then, surely. 30 pounds anybody? 30. Give me 20 pounds then. 20. How much did you pay for it? 120. <laughs> 10 pounds. Surely somebody's going to bid me 10 pounds. Nobody drinks anymore. 10 pounds. This is a problem. Five pounds. Oh my God. Five pounds. Yeah, I believe this is abstemious <laughs> society. <laughs> five pounds bid. Five bid. Six now to a seat. Five pound bid. Six for anybody else now. Then at five. Anybody else going to join in? Six. Yeah, somebody else seven. Bidding. Well done, sir. Eight. Anybody. Eight. It's a long nine, climb now. Ten pound. A Twelve. Yeah, it is. Uh, ten pound bid. Ten bid. Ten. Twelve now to a seat. Ten pounds is bid. My bid is down here. Hammers up, and I sell at ten pounds. Okay. That's yours at £10. pounds. <laughs> won't even tell you what it cost. Well, it was dramatic, at least. Come on, kid. you got to go back in there swinging. <laughs> hey, there's always the joke. Yeah, there's the door. Go on. There's the door. Come on, kid. You're going to be fake. More fill. The carpet from the Caucasus. The very nice uh, triple border with that hot orange down the centre. Who's going to start orange. with that? £200 pounds for it. £200. What? £200, pounds, everybody. £200. £150 no, to go. It, £150. Yeah. Bid me a hundred then. Hundred pounds, everybody. Hundred. Really, a hundred pounds. Bid me fifty then. Fifty. Oh. See to be sold. Fifty. Nobody. Wow. Come on, get a rug in your life. Halve it. Forty. Forty is bid. Thanks. Not half of fifty. Two dorsey. Up forty. Forty-two. Forty-two. The steady Forty-five. Climb. Forty-five. Forty-eight. Oh, you're on the run now. Fifty. At fifty pounds, bid five, surely. At fifty pound, the hammer's up. I'm going to sell it. This you're going to be like still hovering. Last wow. call, then going this time, then at fifty pounds. <laughs> so threadbare. Wow. Cruel, but about sums it up. All right, I feel better now about life. Yes, nice to see that other experts can also get it wrong, eh? Time for John's penultimate lot, Rosebud. When do they do all the sledging? Is that summer? Uh, Lords. Lords. No. <laughs> <laughs> I caught that. <laughs> 12, 15, 18. You're most welcome, sir. Thank you very much. I shall use that later. <laughs> Who's going to start me at £30 for it? 30 anybody? 30. £30, anyone? 30. 20 to go then, surely. £20, anybody? 20. Yeah. Start me at 10 to go then, surely. £10, always very popular in the fens, sledges. £10. £10, anyone? 10. Bid me five then, it's in Ferrari GT Racing Red yeah. Livery. Five pounds. It'd be great if you're 48 grand in the hole. They're the coming for my thumb. Five, five, five. Six now do I see it? Five pound a bid, six bid. Seven now do I see? Seven pounds surely. At six pounds bid, seven now do I see? At six pound a bid, any more bids than at six pounds? We appear to be going downhill, but seven but is none bid. of these people uh, is sledging anywhere. Oh. 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 
that's soon. seven pounds. Are we all done now? That's seven pounds. Got a very nice piece of cord on it. That's seven pounds. Any more now than that's seven? Eight. Late surge in the bidding. Eight bid. I'm glad he just oh, came through. Optimism. The door. You've gone up to nine eight. Now, <laughs> Eight pounds is bid, nine down, do I say nine? It hasn't got any breaks and nor should your bidding have. Nine pounds now <laughs> at eight pounds. The bid's at the back of the room then. Eight pound a bid, last call then with you then. Sells at eight pounds and done. I've done all I can. Eight pounds. We're going to turn wow. 400 quid into Dude, less than 100, which I think is quite impressive, really. That was pretty good. Now, not quite how it's supposed to work out, though. Am I the worst? You're not the worst. <laughs> But Phil is pretty much home and hosed. Here's his Art Deco cabinet. Who's going to start me then? £50 pounds for it. 50 anybody? 50. 50 pounds, anyone? 50. 40. 40 pounds. 30 to go then, surely. 30. Start me at 20 and we'll get on from there. 20. 20 but a bit. 20 bit 2 now. Making it 20 but a bit 2. Do I see now? 2. 2 bit 2. 5 now. 5. 28 now, 28 bid, 30 bid, 2 okay. now, up, 30 bid, 2 for anybody else now, 30 pounds, we're done, 32, 35 now, up, 32, quid. the bid's in the room at 32, but a bid and 5 I'm looking for now, 32, the bid's in the room then, you're out on the net this time then, at 32, we sell then, at 32 pounds, 19, oh, 2 pounds, 2 quid, 2, two quid. quid, but a profit, at least, if I want furniture or rugs, I'm coming to auction, finally, John's pooch, never bit anyone, I wouldn't want to live in a world where a person's heart would not melt at such an artefact. Who's going to start me then at uh, £100? £100, everybody, £100, 100 50 to go then, surely. £50, anybody, £50, £50. Bid me 30 There we go, so one shown with Gary there, 30 Bid me 5 I don't want to go slowly on this. 30 35 now, 35 40 5 50 5 60 5 70 5 85, 90, 5, 95, 95, 100, 100 bid, 110, 110, 100 per bid, 100 per bid, anyone else, 100 per bid, 5 and 100 per bid, 105, 110, 15, 15, 120, 120 is bid here, then 120 bid, 5 and 120, we all done, in the room, I am going to sell, 125, 130, 5, 135, 135, jump back don't on the lose bar. It. Don't lose now. it. 130 is big. Five for everybody else there, definitely walked away. Up, 130, all done and finished then. Hammers up, selling then. Sold at 130 pounds. That was the one thing I thought we could make some money on the dog. We made some money on the dog. All the others were actually dogs. <laughs> oh, right. You're going to get letters from the girl guides now. You're going to get letters. What an epic, eh? Got to be worth a hectometer at least. Well, who can believe that turn of events? I feel like I've been in boxing, Matt. I'm ruined. <laughs> no, I, I, I told you it was going to be a rough up. Yeah. yeah. I know. Yeah, you said. We leave as champions. Come on, yeah. let's go. You're not wrong, James. John and Steph started out with £400 and, after auction costs, they made a whopping great loss. So they end up with £166.46. While Phil and James, who also began with 400 made a very big profit. Also after costs, which means their winning total is £525 and 80p. And all that profit goes to children in need. The Thanks, auction Riley. giveth and the auction taketh away. Hey. Well, congratulations. Thanks, yeah, Steph, thank you. thank you very much. Thank you very much, congratulations. Thank Dr Clark. Always a pleasure, Always a James, pleasure. Never a the Obi-Wan Kenobi <laughs> of auctions. The wood guy, <laughs> yeah. James. Yeah. Nice one. You've got a result there, son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There they are. Oh. they got a thing going here. Let's leave. Yeah, let's let's leave. Leave. Oh, Come on, Clark. Hey. Go on. Go, go. Let's get show for a wait. Yes. Time to go. Once more a roving. That's that done, then. Yeah. Uh, Venturing yeah. into the new demographic. I think I'm ready for a gardening programme now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something but... mid-afternoon. Yeah. I can see you with loose women. <laughs> Cheerio, chaps.